Jay, you know, calls me or yells out, hey, so, well, let me back up for a second. He asked for a fire mission and the gunship is like, absolutely not. He's like, you guys are so close, we'll fucking kill you. Like we were, we were well within danger close parameters. So um, they're like, you have to figure out a way to fall back from these guys. And Jay's like, dude, there's no place for us to go. It's like thousands of yards of empty desert. It's like, not only that, you know, I got two dudes all shot up, one, you know, super shot up and, you know, we can't even get to him. And uh, they're like, you got to figure something out because we can't bring this fire mission in. We'll kill you guys. So period of time goes by. He calls back again. They're like, no, absolutely not. So the third time he calls back and he's like, look, like, and I don't know how long this has been. And this had been probably 25 minutes at this point in a very intense gunfight. He's like, we are running out of ammo. He's like, nobody's going to be left if you don't bring this fire mission in. So finally they said, okay, well, uh, what's your JTAC number? So JTACs in the military are guys who've been officially trained to, it's called a Joint Tactile Air Controller. So that means they have been blessed by special operations to have the skills to bring in gunfire from aircraft. And, uh, and they have to know all the different parameters and all these things so that we don't mistakenly kill friendly forces, which we have done with fire missions from the sky. So um, they, they say to Jay, what's your JTAC number? Because they wanted to put the onus on him that if they accidentally killed us, it would be Jay's fault and not the gunship's fault. And I mean, I respect that. I don't know, sometimes. Anyways, um, so he gave it to him and I remember him yelling out to me, hey, incoming. And I remember laying there and, and you can hear the gun go off and you know, there's a, there's a delay. You know, there's a period of time before the rounds hit the ground. I mean, decent amount. And I remember waiting and waiting and all of a sudden, boom, it, it was 40 Mike Mike. And it literally hit the ground directly in front of me. And, and well, you know, in front of me enough that it blew up and I felt the concussive blast and the dust and debris. And uh, immediately the machine gun in front of me went cold. And I heard the guy yelling out, Ah, and I was like, Roger that, stand by, bro, because here he comes. And sure enough, they called in the next couple of fire missions. So in between those fire missions, Jay ran forward and got me and dragged me back to the tire. Um, so there was th they were still engaging and fighting. So some of the things I don't remember to this day, I found this out years later. Uh, we were all hanging out one night. And our medic was like, hey, man, do you remember when you yelled at me for throwing that grenade? I was like, what? No. And he's like, yeah, like we're in, you, you know, we were back. You were by the tire. You were totally fucking unconscious. And I said, hey, I'm going to throw a grenade. And dude, you sat straight up and we're like, put that fucking grenade away before you kill us all. Um, and the reason being is because we were at, I'd, I guess it's a training lesson from SEAL Team 4 back in the day. You don't throw grenades into vegetation because it'll bounce off vegetation and come back at you. Um, so, um, I don't know. But he was like, yeah, man, like, like, dude, I, I didn't. He was like, dude, you like bark thunder. And then you laid back down and went back unconscious. So, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't, damn, I don't remember that story at all. Wow. I mean, I don't remember anything about that. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.